you know, we, we, we all love the killers because they, they're a local band here in Las Vegas. So we all, we all have a lot of love for them anyway. So I'll go see them anytime, anywhere. Um, so we talked about your path a little bit, the jobs you had up to a leadership <laughs> role as an executive at Bellagio, but how did you rise up to be a leader? What, what qualities did you have? What qualities did you foster? What do you think was important uh, in how you did your job, how you thought about you, you, how you thought about doing your job, how you worked with people to rise to that position? Sure. I think that instinctively in me, I always had something that people gathered around. I, I never could quite understand it. Even when I was in Boy Scouts, I turned out to be a leader in Boy Scouts and, and through high school and sports and academics and all the way into my work career, I found that there were people around me that would ask me questions all the time for answers. And I never really quite understood, but later getting into more of a corporate setting, it became obvious that I had the ability to manage people. Now that's a, a talent to learn how to be a leader is a whole different thing. Managing people is essentially just having a vision and an outcome and knowing how to accomplish that goal to get them there. And it could be a little rough. Sometimes it's not the best for the people that are in the team, and it doesn't necessarily come out the way that you would hope. But evolving to leadership, now that's a whole different deal. And I have to give a lot of credit to you know MGM Resorts International. I came up as a baby uh, through Mirage Events, which was Steve Wynn's company, and we merged with MGM. 20 years ago or so. And when those uh, came together, the structure of, of opportunity and training really started to present itself. In those days, we had great mentors in our company, the top of the top, best of the best. You know, a lot of them had come out of Four Seasons. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of us were just nurtured in Las Vegas under, you know, these casino moguls. But what they really were uh, focused on is growing us as human beings into the best leaders we could be. And they offered, you know, instructional classes that had a lot to do with emotional intelligence, not necessarily focusing on, you know, what you could get done, but how you got it done. And I bit hook, line, and sinker. I, I'm just a human nature guy. So I really enjoy being in scenarios where I could help people grow and be their best selves, which obviously is translated out here. What really became a challenge is learning how to be a leader. Yeah, you know, it's it's funny you mention um, the mergers and consolidation. That was definitely something I wanted to ask you about because I was stationed here in the Air Force from 2002 to 2007. So I came in, I moved here just kind of as all those mergers and consolidations were beginning down on the strip. And it, I certainly had a perspective as an outside observer, but I'd love to hear what your perspective was as someone who was inside the industry at the working level and moving up during that time period. Yeah. Um, what, what did you notice about whether it was about leadership development, whether it was about um, how the, how the companies, uh, if culture changed, what, what was your perspective going through that whole strip ownership consolidation phase about 20 years ago? Well, my first introduction to leadership was uh, in a, a small talk I had with this gentleman who I respect over the years at the golden nugget. Uh, his name is Jim Kinsella. And I had just come into my general manager's role at, at the California Pizza Kitchen. And I noticed that the operational VP that had just been promoted was the actual food and beverage VP before that. And I didn't understand how does somebody in food and beverage that spent 25 years move into an operational role in the front of the hotel, knowing that those are two totally different business models. And he said very simply to me, you don't get it. Leadership is not about what you know. It's about ensuring that the people, the, ensuring to people above you that you can get the job done regardless of the circumstances. And every good leader in this business is smart enough to put people around them that are smarter than them. And I, as soon as he said that to me, I thought, oh, I can do that. I know how to put people around me that are smarter than me and how to take in consideration what my leadership is looking for and take the ownership of making sure that gets done. And those two things sat with me very clearly, and I had the ability to do that. And that was essentially the rocket ship that I needed to know that this wasn't a mystery. This wasn't something that people were schooled for. This was something that people got the opportunity to do. And so when I was in a, a role, my first leadership role as, as the general manager of the California Pizza Kitchen, I, in my mind at that moment, 
took on the responsibility of the of the restaurant's revenues, you know, its inventories, the development of the team, where the expectations were going to be ultimately in, in in growth and marketing, whatever it took. I didn't I didn't shrink from those responsibilities and fear. I looked for opportunity to learn from other people around me and essentially started creating networks, which is where I think, you know, in this world right now is the strongest thing you can do when you're growing from your manager's mindsets into leadership roles is creating networks around you of other leaders that you can observe from, you can have, you can, you can bounce ideas off of, but understand that these, these decisions you're going to make, they're yours and that you need to make the most logical decisions you can make with your own research. So it becomes a very ownership based idea when you're moving from management to leadership. Yeah, I think you said the magic words in there about you took accountability for the expectations that you were placed on you. It, uh, to, to summarize, you you took accountability for the success of that restaurant inside that hotel. You weren't you weren't looking for okay, you know what what is what is the guidance? What are my instructions? What are my orders? You said okay, leadership is about making sure this thing is successful and I'm going to do what it needs to take, whatever it takes to get that done. And a lot of leaders really struggle with that is, Oh, I need, I need to accept that I've got this. I need to be able to say, go forward and say, I've got this to my higher up leader in the chain. And, and I think that's such a critical piece of leadership. You know, we expect young leaders to start to get that. And we, we want to mentor them to start to, to understand that.